The usual way to get to Prescott from Phoenix, Arizona is just take Highway 17 up to the turnoff for Prescott. But we wanted to do something different this time. We took Highway 60 out past Wickenburg to Highway 89. And it gave us a chance to see a different kind of Arizona, which most people don't get a chance to see. It takes a little longer to get there, but it is well worth the effort. And once you arrive in town, you're greeted with the town square and the courthouse. And across the street is Whiskey Row and the world famous palace. When you go through the swinging doors of the palace, it's like you go through a time machine and you have entered the wild, wild west. Well, welcome to the historic palace here in Prescott, Arizona, Whiskey Row. Uh, this bar is very important to the history of the entire state of Arizona. Now, Prescott was the early capital during the Civil War. President Abraham Lincoln did say, hey, y'all need to make Prescott the capital. I don't want them sympathizing with the South. So for a short period of time, we were the capital. So we have some pretty historic characters to the palace. For instance, the Earps. They were all here prior to Tombstone. Virgil Earp was our town constable. He and his wife, Allie, also had a sawmill up at the base of Thumb View, and they still called it Old Sawmill Road to this day. And they say he shot two of the Red Sash Cowboys right out in front of the palace. And then Doc Holliday also won $10,000 playing poker while he was here. And they say that that was the one time Kate and Doc got along very well. I guess they were on a great winning streak and life was good. So they didn't get into too much trouble here. And later on in life, Big Nose Kate came back and she was a car dealer here in her senior years and she retired at the old retirement home right up the hill. Now, granted, back in those days, the rules were you had to be a man and a U.S. citizen to be able to retire there. And if you read the nice little history books, it says her, the governor did her a favor and got her in there to retire. And I would tell that story from the bar all the time until one day this lady comes in and she goes, what? She says, no, my aunt was her caretaker and she told the governor, her ex brothel client, I'm going to tell everybody what a dirty old man you are if you don't get me to retire in Prescott. So they had her up there in two weeks and she was from Hungary and a woman and that was unheard of and there's no plaque to this day. So I wonder if that lady wasn't telling the truth, but what we're notoriously known for is this wonderful old Brunswick bar. It was on July 14, 1900, the road caught on fire. They say there was a miner up the street, he was kind of drunk, fell asleep, and his oil lamp caught on a newspaper. Now, we had lots of fires before this, everything was wood, mining town, so they were kind of accustomed to, well, you know, so what they did was they took the bar, drug it out across the street, got drunk while the whole town burnt down, and it says they even saved the piano, the liquor, and they were singing, it's gonna be a hot one in the old town tonight. <laughs> now when they did get that bar out across the street, they built this little shack around it, and it says Brow's Palace, and not ashamed of it, because Brow Brow was the owner at the time. And they just kept serving off of it until this place was rebuilt and opened in June of 1901. So as big and beautiful as this is, it's, that's a short period of time. And we'll have the opening day picture right there by the window. So if you come in, you know, check out the pictures, see all the stuff going on. We also are home to the world's oldest rodeo. 
Oh, and of course, with Tombstone, back to that, Johnny Behan was also our sheriff. So those guys were going at it here before they ever got down there. And then there's some funny, quirky stuff that you would never know if someone didn't show you, for instance, right down here. That's a very curious thing, and we've got more buttons all along the panels down there. Now, when I first started working here, I'm like, Dave, what, what's up with the buttons? What are those for? I don't know. So I started going to the archives, and I found it. In the archives, it said the buttons were used to summon a soiled dove down from her crib. <laughs> so they were hooker buttons or call girl buttons. <laughs> you will not see those in other places. And then another funny quirk is that door above the safe right there. Now, back in the day, it was pretty common for banks and saloons to have that. And what that was was for the pit boss. They would sit him up there in a chair with a double barrel shotgun and he was just making sure nobody was cheating on the gambling. <laughs> and that was pretty common. In some of the more modern history, if you listen to some of the regulars talk about Shell Dunbar, he was such a character to this town. Somebody needs to write a book about this guy. And I get all my stories right from his daughter. She is an awesome lady. And they all say the same thing. There's our little offices now, but they used to be the frequent brothel rooms. And later on, Shell kind of used it as his apartment. And if you were making too much noise late at night, he'd come out in his underwear, just cursing at you and yelling to shut up. <laughs> we get people from Russia, we get people from Poland, Germany, all over the world. They deserve the experience of Whiskey Row and seeing historical reenactments. We have expense ledgers, uh, hotel registers, everything they bought and purchased in 1901 when they rebuilt the palace. Uh, everything that they bought is all handwritten uh, and we just acquired those from a gentleman in Iowa who had bought them at a garage sale years ago in Scottsdale. So pretty, pretty neat. Back in the day there was some cool movies filmed here. There was Junior Bonner with Steve McQueen, and that is such a cute, goofy slapstick for the day. I highly recommend you watch that. They just don't make things like that anymore. Billy Jack, that was all filmed here, and if you see the palace back in those days, it has like turquoise walls, and they also built the bar to wrap around, but that was just to add on the bar that's here is that original bar. A lot of folks know about our granite mountain hot shots, the 19 that perished in the fire about six, seven years ago. And, and we have a beautiful memorial painting in the back to them. It was unfortunate with the production setup that they couldn't really film the movie where it was. They did it in New Mexico, but when Frank Shankwitz came to film his movie, The Wish Man, he kind of broke down some barriers. He insisted, number one, that it be filmed in his hometown. It took us two and a half years to write the screenplay, and we actually started filming in Prescott because I wanted to give back to this community. Hollywood brings a lot of money into a community, and I wanted to give back here. And I lobbied very hard for that movie to be filmed here. And the movie, again, is a Wish Man, available on Netflix right now. Big beautiful flag, our dining room, and some of the bar scenes were all filmed here. So that was a lot of fun. And if you haven't seen Wish Man, you have to see that. It's good for the whole family, and it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Being somewhat of a fan of Doc Holliday, I wondered what he drank to ease the pain of his consumption, and Martha told me. Speaking of that old overhaul, You'll see we have an artifact bottle here. And then I promised you that we do serve it. So I'll show you what a bottle looks like today. Any Ode over hope. So we still got it. And being on Whiskey Row, we have the finest whiskeys 
you will find anywhere. This is kind of like our almost top shelf, pretty close. And this is our top, top shelf. And it's very difficult to find, but we have four options for Van Winkle. We've got the old Rip Van Winkle, we got the 12 year, the 15, and it's gonna set you back quite a bit, but we got the 23 year. And you'll find some of the best whiskeys that you'll get anywhere. The old Blanton's made for the Kentucky Derby. And then of course, you could just do Doc Holiday style and do the old overhaul. <laughs> and this here, Jerry Lieberman, is the best ragtime piano player in all of history. Where's my violin? From Hell's Kitchen, New York. Our town historian here. This is Mr. Brad Courtney. Speaking of our old town constable, Virgil Earp, this is our current constable, Ron Williams. When you come here, you notice it looks like a town from back east. There's a courthouse, there's a square. A lot of the homes are old Victorian from the turn of the century or the old bungalows. If you come into this town, you've got to do a little drive around just to check it out. Even, you know, the high curbs so you could get on and off your horse. <laughs> Things like that you just can't find anywhere. Everybody's done away with it. It's not just people that work here that dress in garb. You're going to find a lot of the locals. A lot of people from around just want to come and cowboy up or cowgirl up and you'll see the renegades and just their shady ladies. A lot of them just get dressed to the nines and come in and hang out and it's almost like you're going through a time travel experience walking through the big swinging saloon doors and you're like, oh my gosh, everybody's from back in the day. And then we have the best steak in Arizona. If you want a good steak, the palace is the place. We're not just a great tourist spot. We actually have really good food. I've got an Arizona sampler here. I've got from light to dark. These are all Arizona beers. And I'm gonna sample right now. find a lot of great stuff here with the herbs, a lot of the history, and it's a place where you can actually come and touch it, drink off the same bar as Doc Holliday. And we serve the old Overholt whiskey that he loved to drink. So you can have that experience. It's a lot of fun. And even if you don't always dress up, everyone's welcome to. And we look forward to having you.